Welcome to a little Lab Rat Fun Networking with Fish. This is the BGP Show and Tell snippet number four. So what we're going to do in this one is kind of obvious because it's the big red X. So last we left this, R2 um, was getting two paths to get to 40.100, 100.40. It was getting um, it from the path from R20 via its eBGP peer. It was also getting that prefix via the path from R20. Three, it's IBGP peer. Uh, same thing for the IPv6. It was getting R2 was getting the prefix from the path from its EBGP peer R20, and also from its IBGP peer. As we mentioned in the last show and tell, because of the fact that we were not doing anything with weight, local preference, AS path, etc., 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 what we're actually doing is we're going all the way down in the BGP best path decision making algorithm to eBGP versus IBGP. So actually, although R2 has two paths to get to uh, this loop back here via IPv4 and IPv6, R2 is actually preferring the one to R20. Same thing with R3. R3 is preferring the one to R30. So if we go ahead and we look over in R2 and we do a show IP BGP summary, and remember I use aliases. We are learning two prefixes from router 3 and three prefixes from router 20. So if we actually do a BGP, we can actually see right here, again, I, router 2, have two ways to get to this loopback that's being advertised in Autonomous System 40. And the best one is the one that is actually through uh, my eBGP peer R20. Same thing is going to happen for IPv6. So we have this as the IPv6 address that is being advertised and or originated in Autonomous System 40. The best is actually not the second one. This one is not being chosen as the second one. It is actually the first one right here. And it is the one from uh, our eBGP peer R20. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to make the assumption. Oh, and let me do one more thing. Show IP route, BGP. And so there we have in our BGP table, our BGP learned route. So if we do a show IP v6 route, BGP, those are IPv6 routes. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to assume that we have thought about everything and we're configured properly, which hint, hint, we are not. Um, and we're going to go ahead and shut down that interface. And we're going to see the prefixes that R3 is advertising to us get promoted to the rib. Actually, no, we're not. We're actually going to end up troubleshooting why that's not happening. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a config T interface gigabit 03. That's actually where we're learning this from. And we're going to do a shutdown. So go ahead and look, BGPS, again, these are some uh, aliases that I have. So this is actually idle 6S. And so our eBGP peer to router 20 is down. So this should not be a surprise because I already did a spoiler for you. And it is not there. So we are not promoting, we are not choosing anything that R3 is sending us. Remember, R3 is sending us these prefixes. So the internet is advertising these prefixes, IPv4, IPv6 to its eBGP peer. R30 is advertising them to R3. In fact, if we went to R3 and actually said, uh, show IP BGP, we would actually see that we are learning all of these from router 30 and that they are actually getting selected and put into the routing table. And we could do a show IP route or a show IP route BGP and voila, show IP v6, sorry, v6 route BGP. And there we go. So this is being learned from gigabit 03. Um, and this is actually being learned again from router th 30. So we're advertising these to R2. So why is R2 not putting them into the, uh, from the BGP table? Because if we look here, we see that R2 is receiving these three prefixes as we saw up here. So um, R2 is receiving 
these three prefixes, and the three prefixes are actually these three prefixes. Now, if you recall from BGP Show and Tell snippet number two, um, we actually, that was the one where we actually, um, I BGP peered R2 and R3. And if you recall from that, we were actually, we noticed because R3 was not EBGP peered yet. We had just IBGP peered. And R3 was not uh, going through the BGP best path from the prefixes that R2 was sending it. And none of those were actually making it that R3, R2 was sending to R3 were making it into the routing table. And if you recall, it looked eerily similar to this. None of these actually have a greater than symbol. None of them are being picked as best path. Why? Well, remember that the next hop for IBGP is going to be left unchanged. And that's what we did in snippet number two. What we had to do was R2 by default when it was sending these prefixes that it learned from R20 to R3, it was by default leaving the next hop unchanged and so it was for the ipv4 address it was 20.2.20.20 for these prefixes and ibgp's default behavior is to leave the next hop unchanged so when we are to advertise it to r3 r3 does not have this subnet and IPv4 in its writing table, nor does it have this subnet and IPv6 in its writing table. Now you could go ahead, since this is your autonomous system, and you could advertise these subnets, and you wouldn't have to do what we did before, but we went ahead, ahead and on R2, we did, if you recall, we went into R2, and what we did was we went right here, and we went to the neighbor statement under IPv4, and we said next top self. So we did a next top self and we also did that for IPv6. Why is that important? Because if you recall, that is just us, R2, saying when I, R2, send stuff to R3, I will actually change the next top from what R20 is telling me to my IP address for this BGP peer, which is my loopback. We did not, however, do that on R3 towards R2. So R3, by default, is still sending this subnet right here as the next hop, so 3330.30, or IPv6 address 2001.dogbaker83, colon, 30, colon, colon, 30. So if we actually come over here and we do a BGP, again, these are aliases, 40.30. 100.100.40 we will already see that 30.3.30.3 which is actually this subnet right here is viewed as the next hop well guess what that is inaccessible right because we do not have that subnet in our routing table nor do we have any kind of quad zero or anything else that is going over to r2 so we have no way to get there so since we have no way to get there we're not even going to run BGP best path on it because it's not viable, right? It's the next hop is inaccessible. And that's gonna be the same thing that's going to happen on the IPv6 side. So let's go ahead and 2001 colon dog baker eight colon 40 colon 40 colon colon 40. Oops, a daisy. Clearly I did something wrong. Uh, BGP six. 2001 colon dog baker 8 colon 40 colon, colon 40 oh, 128 sorry about that so um, inaccessible so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go over to R3 a couple things we could do we could go ahead and advertise that those subnets in IPv4 and IPv6 so that R2 will install it but then we're doing one thing on one router and a different thing on another so we're not going to go ahead we're not going to do that we already have that going on because of those timers that we put in so we could play. So we're going to go ahead and do a config T router BGP 10 address family IPv4. And then I'm going to go ahead and come up here. And this is actually over to our next top self. <coughs> Excuse me. And then this is the uh, IPv6 neighbor statement for R2. 
And we'll do the same thing that I did before, which was clear IP BGP, the gnarly, nasty, I'm a lab rat way of doing this. And so we'll go ahead and come over here and make sure that we're up and running. Not yet. Now, of course, we're still idle to R20 uh, right here. But there we go. We've got our BGP neighbor with router 3. And we've got our three prefixes. So let's go ahead and do a show IP BGP, which is show IP BGP. And we'll actually see that now we actually see all of the prefixes that router 3 is advertising to us with the next hop of our IP BGP peer with router 3 because we did the next hop self uh, command. That's also going to be the same thing that's going to happen with um, BGP 6. So um, with the IPv6 table for BGP. And again, we are now going to be using actually the IP address. So this is actually the IP address of the loopback for router 3. And because of that, these are now going to go ahead and make it show IP route, uh, show IP, sorry about that, v6 route, <coughs> excuse me, BGP. So there, voila, and that is actually the end of this one. We'll go ahead and we'll do a no shut. So let's go ahead and do a config T interface gigabit 03, and we'll do a no shut. So I think that's important to think through because IBGP will always do this. So I think it's important to think through and know that just because you put it on in one direction doesn't necessarily mean that that's some kind of um, thing that they negotiate. It is in each direction you're going to go ahead and you're going to go ahead and know that you're supposed to send the next top to yourself as opposed to leave it unchanged. But you need it in both directions. So let's go ahead and do a BGP summary. So now we're going ahead and we're up. And again, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and for this, we're going back to router 20, which is the top one. And again, because of the fact that this is eBGP, weight's the same, local preference is the same. We both have two AS paths that we're going through, so we get all the way down to external versus internal. So external ends up being best. And for the next one, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and see if we can actually ping this IP address. So that would be snippet BGP show and tell snippet number five.